It's regarded by many as the best science fiction movie ever made, yet it contains no action scenes, there's hardly any sound effects, and even the dialogue is minimal. Yes, we're talking about 2001 A Space Odyssey, and this is Science 5. The history of 2001 A Space Odyssey has been well documented over the decades. Inspired by a 1951 short story by Arthur C. Clarke called The Sentinel and adapted into a film in 1968 by Stanley Kubrick, 2001 was created at a time before the moon landings had even occurred and when human space travel itself was in its absolute infancy. Visually inspired by the short films Universe and To the Moon and Beyond, 2001 may not necessarily be the benchmark in terms of dramatic narrative and dialogue, but what makes it stand out was the deliberate intention to distance itself from its science fiction contemporaries, where big monsters, flying saucers and exploiting female sexuality were commonplace, remembering that Barbarella was released the same year. As a consequence of this, it is one of the few science fiction films worthy of being considered a masterpiece, and as noted by many reviewers, it was easy to believe you were actually looking at real space. Somewhat amusingly, the film was released one year before the actual moon landings, so many science fiction fans as well as space enthusiasts thought that in the real 2001, which was considered a long way in the future at that point, there really would be a massive floating space station, complete with a hotel, as well as a huge moon base. Sadly, in the real 2001, there was barely anybody living on the ISS, and as for moon base, well... Putting aside the fact the film's predictions of the future were a bit off, after all, who knew that Pan Am would conclude operations in 1991 and video phone calls would cost a lot more than $1.70? Without doubt though, one of the most fascinating aspects of the film is the computer character Hal, who ironically acts more human than the humans. Made at a time when computers themselves were beyond the understanding and comprehension of everyday society, Hal is the ideal representation of artificial intelligence, which makes his character more relevant today than when the film was released. However, as highlighted in the film, when artificial intelligence senses its existence as being threatened by humanity, will it then take measures to ensure its self-preservation, which includes the killing of humans? Another aspect of the film which truly defined its greatness was what you heard and didn't hear. With regards to the latter, the complete absence of sound effects for the space scenes cemented the film's drive for scientific accuracy, which actually takes a bit of time to get used to. Alas, for better or worse, this stance was reversed in the film's sequel 2010 The Year We Made Contact, released in 1984, where everything made a sound. Alongside the absence of sound effects was the inclusion of classical music by noted composers in lieu of a contemporary score. Once again, the poetic irony of this artistic choice is that for the sequel, neither classical music nor even a traditional orchestral score was used. Instead, it was replaced by synthesized music. But the big question is, what's the ending all about? The most rational explanation is that Bowman gets captured by the aliens, they stick him in this room, they keep him well fed, nice and comfortable until the day's about to cark it. When that occurs, the monolith reappears, he gets converted into the Star Child, sent back to Earth, and is now meant to represent the advancement of human evolution. Don't know how correct that is, but at least it's a good starting point. What is of particular interest is that in the film the monolith, though alien in origin, shows no semblance of hostility, nor do the aliens controlling it. Yet in the final novel in the book series, 3001 The Final Odyssey, we discover the monolith is connected to an alien species who conclude humanity is unworthy of existence and thus begin preparations to eliminate it. This of course goes against what we see in the film with the safe capture of Bowman and his comfortable living conditions. Ultimately what makes the film work is it encourages people to talk about it, study it, analyse it and reflect on everything within it even if it's not the most exciting movie in the world to watch. As has been noted by academic scholars and film critics alike, everything in the film has a symbolic meaning. With that in mind, perhaps the most poignant message of all is when the ape Moonwatcher picks up a bone. Sadly, his first instinct isn't to use it to create or develop, but to smash, destroy and kill. Now what does that tell you about humanity? In the end, if there really is a monolith buried on the moon just waiting to be discovered so it can prove the existence of alien intelligence, well, it's just going to have to wait there a little bit longer. Okay, maybe a lot longer, but while it does that, make sure you join us again for another Sci-Fi Spective. <laughs>